Hey y'all, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today as we talk about the power of numberless word problems. I want you to raise your hand, myself included, if you hate teaching problem solving. Like I know that is something that I always struggled with because now within education, I think we all know that not only do kids have to know how to do a certain concept, but they also have to know how to do that particular skill in a problem solving format. You know, when it comes to standardized testing or end of unit assessments provided by our curriculum, and it can be something that's very stressful for our students for multiple reasons. And so today I'm gonna to talk to you about the importance of numberless word problems. So I wanna know, let me know in the comments, have you ever tried numberless word problems before? Have you ever heard of them? Um, let me know. I would love to know your experience with them. And so numberless word problems, they are exactly how they sound. It is when you take a word problem and you remove the numbers. So you might be thinking like, why would you do this? Well, again, I want you to think back, you know, have you had students who just automatically, you have a word problem shown, they, all they do is they focus on the numbers shown and they just pick like addition or subtraction and they just solve. Like they don't actually read the problem to understand what is being taught. Like I know I've had several students who do that. Um, you might have a student who just immediately looks at the numbers, they look at the end sentence to see if there's a keyword there. If you choose to teach keywords, that's, that's all they look for. They don't look for the action that's being taught. Uh, keywords are a great strategy to use in problem solving. Um, I am guilty, I have taught them, and I think especially in primary, in elementary grades, I think that's okay. Once keywords are removed from problems, we're seeing, or you know, research has shown that that's where students, they're seeing a problem because they're not seeing those keywords anymore and they don't know how to solve. And so this strategy in particular can help remove some of that anxiety. So if you teach keywords, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I just don't think that it's the only strategy that you should use when it comes to problem solving. Let's just dive in and let's talk about some of the benefits to removing numbers from your word problems. So one, this helps students shift the focus from focusing on the numbers being shown and it helps them shift their focus to actually understanding what is occurring within the problem. You know, is it focusing on addition or subtraction or multiplication and division if you, know, if you teach upper grades? Is it, um, is it a add to start result unknown problem? Is it a part, part, whole? Are they joining something together? Are they separating something? Um, and you, you might be thinking like, Marcy, what are you talking about? Like there's just addition and subtraction. Like, yes, there's addition and subtraction, but guys, there's so much more. Research shows that in second grade, students are exposed to 11 different types of word problems. That's right, 11 different kinds. You have got add to start unknown. You have got add to Results unknown. You've got joining problems. You've got separating problems. You've got comparing problems in which I'm going to go. Um, that's going to be another Facebook live topic coming up here is I'm going to kind of go into more detail about those. But there's so much more than just adding and subtracting when it comes to problem solving skills that our students are just completely missing. And so by removing the numbers, when there's not any numbers, there's not any operation for them to automatically focus on. It allows our students to slow down. We're basically forcing them to slow down. We're taking the time to solve, not the numbers, but they're solving what action is being done. What is this problem talking about? What is it wanting us to do? And by doing this, you're opening up and having those mathematical conversations with your students. And then eventually they are going to be able to see similarities within the mathematical representations that they're seeing. 
So is it a problem where we're going to add? Does it have a missing add-in? Do we need to subtract? What do we need to do? And so the more frequently you expose your students to this and by having those conversations, what is actually happening, you are allowing them, you're forcing them again to slow down and take the time to focus on what is happening within the problem rather than them focusing, um, immediately focusing on the numbers. Once they've been able to grasp the concept of what is being, you know, what is the action in the problem? What do they need to do? Then you can add numbers in there and, you know, then they can add the numbers to the action instead of just focusing on the numbers. Um, another great thing about numberless word problems is that it allows for differentiation. Um, I know I have experienced students that like if they automatically see larger numbers that they struggle with or they aren't familiar with, it gives them anxiety and they tend to shut down and they find word problems intimidating. And that's not what we want as, you know, as educators. We don't want our students to hate math. We want them to enjoy it. So, you know, we need to be able to provide them with multiple opportunities to exceed. And so by removing the problem, it, excuse me, not removing the problem, removing the numbers, it takes away that anxiety. And then it also allows you to differentiate your instruction. So you might have some students that still need to work on problem solving with just single digit numbers. And you might have students that need to focus on multi-digit numbers with or without regrouping. And so once you have taken the concept and you've broken it down, then you can differentiate the numbers that your students need in order for them to succeed. So um, once they gain that understanding, then you can have your students roll dice to solve. They might use number cards. You might have them choose their own numbers. You can assign their own numbers, but um, we want them, obviously we want the them to succeed in every aspect that they do. And so we don't want problem solving to feel like, we don't want it to cause you know, any discouragement or you know, give them even more anxiety that they might already be having. And so once they have taken the time to understand the problem, then they get to practice computation. And so it's a win-win situation. If you have never tried numberless word problems in your classroom, I would really like to encourage you to do that. Try it with your students and let me know how it goes. Um, more than likely, you are going to reveal some misconceptions that your students might have had prior to problem solving strategies when the numbers are removed and you can help them solve those, mis those misconceptions. So um, if you are looking for resources when it comes to teaching numberless word problems, you can check out my problem solving units that I have in my TPT store. Um, and then if you've got any other questions about this, let me know if this is something that you think you might wanna try with your students. I would love to hear about it if you try it out and it goes well, or if you have any kind of experience, I would love, you know, I would join my Facebook group. I would love to hear all about your experience with that there as well. And so that's it for today. I am going to let you guys go. And if you've got any questions, leave me a comment, let me know, and I will talk to you later. Bye.